Welcome to the Business Blueprint Podcast, where we take you on an exciting adventure through our triumphs and challenges and failures in creating and maintaining a thriving six, seven, and eight-figure business. Get ready to dive into our strategies, decisions, and yes, even valuable lessons we've learned from our missteps. That's not all. We'll also bring you industry-leading guests who will provide you with their priceless insights and wisdom. Stay tuned because the captivating journey of the Business Blueprint begins right now. Hi, I'm Charles Hatley, The Business Blueprint, and today I'm joined by Rebecca Malone and Dan Cuneo, and what we're going to talk about is something that, that often comes up, and that's the, the idea of employment reviews, going through your yearly review with your employees, rating everybody one through five, A through F, however you, you choose to do it, and really sitting down and having these conversations with each employee on your team to talk about the successes they've had over the year, the, the, where they need improvement from the year, and what their expectations are. But even more importantly, what we wanted to talk about today was setting a a well-defined culture and a well-defined system so that your employees know what their expectations are. They know throughout the year because they understood their KPIs, whether or not they have uh, met their goals and a very objective standard. And so by the time you get to the employment review, you're not surprising anyone. Everybody kind of sits down, you know, when, when you trade the reviews, you know, you, you give me your review, I'll give you my review. They should line up pretty evenly if everybody's being honest. So I, I wanted to throw it to you, Dan, and, and kind of start talking about what do you do to start defining the roles of each individual within the organization? Sure. To me, it all starts with when you define the role, define the KPIs, which are mm-hmm. what, what is the success of that role? And then sit down with that employee and go over them. When you and it all honestly really just starts when you hire them. That's when it it starts. And you sit down and you go over what the job description was, what the job role is, what the expectations are, and then not only what the expectations are, but what are those expectations and how do they relate to the KPIs? And then make sure that they're on the same page. And if they have any questions, answer them. And then throughout the year, you want to have at at least on a monthly basis a one-on-one. I like weeklies, but at least monthly. So then you can go over what does the past month look like? What were any of the issues you had? What were some of the rocks or the boulders? What can we do to help you succeed? And what can we do to help alleviate some of those issues or pain points that you're having? And then when the review time comes, there should be no surprises. Mm -hmm. Everyone should hopefully be on the same page. May differ depending upon how you, you rate yourself versus how the company is rating you. But there, there shouldn't be any surprises, especially from the employee standpoint, because the, the worst is when an employee, you're having the review and they and they don't know something. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's fair to the employee. And we want to be able to set everyone up for success. And in my experience, reviews are should be a good tool to, to use to determine what worked, what didn't work and what can we do moving forward. And when you really break it down, the reviews, questions are good because we want to be able to, to really dig into what was going on, but it has to really be based upon performance, strengths, and then what can we do to improve? And if you narrow it down to those three, then it can be a more productive review. A lot of companies get lost in, I, I've seen companies have pages of reviews or like 20 questions mm-hmm. and it just, it, it's, it's not good use of anyone's time. And it's really not all that productive. And, and it really needs to be a conversation that's had. And it isn't just, one side talking and saying, here's where you need to improve, or uh, at some companies or firms will just do five minutes and it's, here's where I rate you, here's where you rate me, here's where we differ, let's move on. And and that's not good use of time either. So I I think to to really, it it goes back to the very beginning, that first day when you you have that orientation with the employee. Yeah, that's so important. And you kind of touched on something is the review should not just be an exercise and up it's this time of year, it's review time of year, let's go ahead and get it done. It should be an exercise in how can we make everything better? So Rebecca, you know, Dan brought up putting the, the, the expectations of the job all the way back into the job description. So nobody's surprised. How do you reconcile with progress versus perfection? You know, when you're just trying to get a job post out because you just need somebody and you haven't well-defined this position yet. Sure, so that can definitely be kind of an ongoing exercise, but it needs to be shared with the employee. Um, So you might have an overall job description. This is essentially what we need at this point, but you might not have a well-defined, you know, this is how many phone calls you need to be making. This is how many, 
clients you need to bring in. This is how many, whatever it is, you might not have a firm grasp on those numbers because what if it's a new position or what if you're expanding or what if you're going into a new market? And so that's something to be open with the candidate about and say, this is, you know, these are the tasks you'll be completing, but we're still working on defining the exact figures that we're looking for you to keep up with. And then when you have those weekly meetings, if you have a bi-weekly, monthly, whatever meeting, you share that with them. So this is what you've been doing. This is, you know, what we see coming down the road. Um, and so we want you to get to 10 phone calls per day and we want you to get to, you know, whatever number of, of new clients or whatever number of this or number of that. Um, and then that way they have that target in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my favorite questions I was asked by an, an interviewee was, how will I know if, if I'm successful in this position? Like, how long is it going to take before you tell me if I'm doing a good job or bad job? And how, how am I going to get feedback and know what to do? And it was like, I'm going to know within the first two weeks whether you're a fit for this role. But it's important to keep that in mind that folks are coming into these positions looking for that feedback. If they're coming into a new role, if they're kind of growing in their career, um, it may not be something they've done exactly before. And so they're looking for that feedback to happen really quickly so that they know what do I need to do differently tomorrow? Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to fall them, you know, have them fall into having a bad habit or doing something that's not productive. Um, so giving them feedback kind of quickly and helping to define that early on makes it easier down the line. You don't want to get six months in, a year in and say, oh, by the way, I, you're not meeting your goals. What goals? <laughs> we didn't, I don't know what those goals are. Um, so definitely want to want to get that moving as quickly as you can. You know, I've been victim of that. I, I was brought into an organization under one of those situations where I was interviewed. I didn't fit the role that they wanted, but they still wanted to hire me. They hired me and, and I got put into kind of never, never leave. I was bouncing between departments. At one point in time, I was actually working two different jobs at two different times of the day because it was in the steel mill industry. Um, and, and I went for, I think, 18 months without anybody telling me what my job was. And then one day I had a performance review and it wasn't good because I didn't know what to do. And, and I remember sitting there and I was a young, young person at the time. And I was like, why are you doing this to me? You know, you just rated me a whole bunch of twos on things I didn't know I was supposed to do. You know, in, in that situation, what it was, was an organization that was trying to push growth. So they were very worried about something that we've taught before, identifying talent and bringing in talent and then maybe defining what to do. So Dan, in a fast growing organization, how much do you owe it to the, the team member, the employee to make sure to define it the best you can? You absolutely owe it to them. And, and that's a great question that gets overlooked, especially in companies that are growing so fast. They're more focused on the growth and not focused on the employee when it really almost should be flipped in the sense that if you focus on the employee, the growth will come because you, you don't want to have an unhappy employee and then unhappy service and then not bring in the business that you want or even turnover, which is worse. But as long as you're open and honest up front, that sets the stage that kind of sets the tone and the expectations. But as Rebecca pointed out, and, and I agree wholeheartedly, it, you can make it a fluid situation as long as the employee knows. So they don't feel that, well, wait a sec, you're moving the goalpost on me. What What's going on here? So if you're open and honest and, and identify, you know, listen, if it's a new role, we're working on this together, it's going to be fluid. But that's why we have these weekly one-on-ones or whatever the cadence is, because I want you to come to me and let me know what's working, what's not working. That's not a it's not indicative of your success or failure. That's us working together so we can make this successful for the both of us. And that is so imperative. But then also you, you just want to, in, in, in these meetings that you have with an employee, really listen and take that as an opportunity to have those productive conversations and let the employee know that you're here to help. It's not a punitive situation. You want to know what can the company do or what can, the employee do to basically improve the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know uh, there's this book Scaling Up by Vern Harnish, where he talks about, you know, setting the KPIs uh, for the, the employee and having the employee actually report their own KPIs. So if you have somebody that is supposed to make 10 phone calls a week, they have to get on and log like, hey, I made 10 phone calls this week. If they made seven phone call, and that's a green. If they made seven phone calls, that's yellow. If they made five phone calls, that's red. 
and then they have to explain why they didn't hit their, their metric. Rebecca, how do you feel about people reporting their own KPIs? Yeah, so that's something that, that we're starting to look into because it's one thing when you have your weekly meeting and I'm coming to the employee and saying, oh, you hit your numbers or you didn't hit your numbers or whatever, um, That that's one thing. But having them really, if you want them to take ownership of it, they should be the ones coming to you with the numbers to say, I hit my targets or I didn't hit my targets and here's why, or I'm expecting to, you know, hit them next week or not hit them. And, and again, here's why. Mm -hmm. um, if you want someone to truly own something and be responsible for it, then they should be the ones doing it and, and making those reports. And so that's something that, again, we're sort of always evolving, um, but looking into different and more efficient ways of having employees take ownership of their own metrics. And again, that way you're avoiding the surprises. If I've been coming to you every single week and saying, I'm, I'm only getting to 20 and I should be getting to 30, um, there should be absolutely no surprise in my performance review oh, I didn't, I know I didn't hit my metrics. I know I'm not meeting expectations because I know what they were. I've been doing the reporting every week. There's, you know, complete, there's records about everything. Um, and let's just talk about how to fix this or why it's not happening or whatever else is going on. So I, I do think that's something that we need to be implementing. And I think it's useful no matter what industry you're in. And, you know, when you're setting the, these expectations, KPIs, whatever goals, whatever you want to call them, Dan, how important do you think it is to work with the team member to say, what do you think you can achieve? So, you know, we kind of started talking about it a little bit. If your goal is to make 10 phone calls a day and three months into it, you realize you can make 20 phone calls a day or you can only make five phone calls a day. How important do you think it is to work with that team member to adjust these KPIs or goals? It's extremely important because what we've been talking about is getting the buy-in from the employee, which creates the ownership. And if you have those open and honest and productive conversations, then it's a, it's a two way street. It's not the employer going to employees saying, here are your KPIs. Here's where I'm seeing on the metrics and why you're not meeting them. That's just really fraught with a lot of anxiety on the employee part and really not working together to move in a, in a more productive manner. And when you have these discussions and, and you do a, a allow the employee to give that honest feedback, then we can work with the employee to make sure that we're both set up for success. Because when you have the employee buy-in, but you're just allowing them to set the KPIs, you don't want to fall into complacency. You don't want the employee to say, okay, well, wait, I get to set my own KPI, so I'm going to set it lower. Mm -hmm. But that's where the meetings come into place. And that's why they're so important because you have the employee saying, okay, well, I think I can do, to stick with our example, 10 phone calls. Great. And the next meeting, oh, I see you met them. What, how long did it take? Uh, what you know, how many were you making in a day? What were some of the issues you had and the other ones you couldn't make? Then, well, let's try for 12 or 15, whatever that may be. So you can kind of land on what a sweet spot is in the sense that it's something attainable, but it's nothing that is easily attainable that just doesn't make any sense. And then therefore, if you have that give and take, not only do you have the buy-in, but you, you also are creating an environment to where you encourage employees to come to you with concerns or ways to improve. And it starts with something just so simple as in, hey, what do you think? And I, I remember the first time one of my um, leaders came to me and asked me what I thought. I was just kind of caught off guard because it doesn't happen too often, but it's resonated with me. And I always use that when I manage or lead to ask, well, what do you think? Because a lot of times what I think, I'm like, oh, that's a great idea, right? I came up with it. It has to make sense. And then when someone comes back and says, well, did you ever think about this or let's try this? It's like, oh, well, yeah, that's a great idea. And then you just, you have that open and honest discussion, which is just so important. And then when it comes time for a review, there, is, there shouldn't be any surprises, but it's also a time to look back and say, okay, here's where we succeeded. Here's what we can improve on. What can we do for the following year? That's like a new year's resolution, right? You look back at the prior year and what went right, what didn't go as planned and what are we going to do uh, for the next year? And, and that's how I treat reviews. It, it's really, it should be an opportunity to where both parties, the employee and the employer, are excited to have them. And it's not just one of those things where we're just checking the box because, okay, we did the review. Here's your merit increase if you receive one. I, I agree, Paul. You know, when somebody is part of making the decision, right, you know, the 10 phone calls and you work on your 10 phone calls and they come to you and say, actually, I could do 12. Okay, well, then your green, you met your goal is 12. 
per day or, or whatever. Then all of a sudden they own it. Cause like you said, they made the decision. It's a great idea. They can now do 12. And, and what's even more interesting about doing a more objective approach to this, we're buying on both sides is they say, well, actually I could do 12, but I've been pushing really, really hard and got to average 13 phone calls per day. You could say, well, look, now you get a bonus. You actually worked and bought into your bonus and having people buy in and make their own decision like that mm -hmm. is really good because then if they don't meet it, you're like, but you told me you could do 12. What's going on? And, and that conversation can become a lot more um, useful when you say what's going on. Um, you know, they might have something going on at home to say, look, I can do 12 phone calls on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but Tuesday and Thursday, I can only do eight. And we say, well, why don't you pick up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 15 and Tuesday and Thursday because of family commitment, you can only do eight. And we can work together to solve those problems. Um, Rebecca, how do you handle it when somebody understands their KPIs, but just habitually misses them? Yeah, then it's time to have that frank conversation and figure out what is going on. Is there something going on in the employee's personal life? and they're not able to meet their work obligations? Is there something else going on where they're they're filling in for somebody else, um, right? And they're, they're taking on roles outside of what they're supposed to be doing or they're helping to cover for somebody else. Um, you know, so getting to the root of the reason why and then figuring out the path forward. Are we going to be able to get you back on track to where you should be or is this just no longer a fit for you? And, and one of the things about our organization is we very much want to develop our people, whether or not they want to stay here forever or, or not. Um, if this is just, you know, one step in their path, then we want to make sure we get them to wherever they want to go and, and get them there as well equipped as we can. Um, but hopefully they're, they're going to want to stay because we're so awesome. So I think that's really the conversation is what is the root cause? And then is this where you want to be? Is this, is this ultimately the position that you still want? Is this something we can accomplish? And if so, how can we get you there? And if it's not, then where do you want to be? And how can we get you where you need to go and keep this a smooth transition? You know, sometimes the KPIs aren't being met because of the team members. Sometimes the KPIs aren't being met because the organization hasn't defined them yet or hasn't mm -hmm. defined them well. Or maybe the organization doesn't even know. Dan, how do you foster that line of communication where somebody who reports to you can come to you and say, look, I don't know what to do because you haven't told me. Th those are tough. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure every leader has gone through that. I've, I've gone through it. And if a leader says they haven't gone through it, I think they're wrong because we're all human and at, at times organizations change, right? So we have KPIs that were, we thought were a good fit for the position, but as times evolve and things are so fluid, maybe that one position has morphed into something else or it becomes a hybrid of something. So then the KPIs change, but that that's why those conversations are so important and, and making sure you continue to foster that open environment and encourage employees to come in and speak up. If their habitual offender will say of, of not meeting the KPIs, well, what's going on? Uh, there's other reasons that could be, it could be personal, it could be professional, it could be both, but it's really listening. At the end of the day, I'm a big proponent of, of listening and making sure that we understand what's going on before we speak and we make decisions. I remember an example, I was with a, another firm before and I was conducting an employee review and, and they were meeting their metrics, but I could sense that something just wasn't right. And I asked, I said, are you happy? And they said, well, and they kind of hemmed and hawed. And I was like, well, you know, this is an open environment. It's all confidential. You know, tell me what we can do to make sure that you're happy. And then she said, well, these are things that I like, but here's what I really like to do. Mm -hmm. And then after the review, I, you know, I listened, I took notes, and then we created another position based upon what that employee liked to do, which benefited the firm and benefited the employee. So listening, it, 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 it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And from there, then you just continue, as Rebecca was saying, growing that employee and making sure that they're successful. Success just doesn't mean that you meet your KPIs. That, that's just one metric. Success is in employee engagement, employee performance, employee happiness. And it's in the workplace and outside the workplace, because our employees are, are the biggest proponent of the company. And when they're happy and they're succeeding, 
they're going to continue to do well, but then they're going to go out and, and recruit. And it may not be intentional. They're not going to go out and say, well, I'm, I want you to work for me. It's just how they speak about the company. And then it just others will gravitate to to that person. And they listen. And then and that's that's the best way for organic growth. But it, it just shows that it all kind of starts with these reviews and setting the KPIs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. And, you know, having somebody tell you that they're not happy in their job, I, I think for me as a manager would probably be a, a crowning point of my career because that means that I have fostered such an open environment that they're willing to be honest with me. Uh, you know, Rebecca, what do you do to try to continue to foster that open environment to where you can act upon your intuition, right? Your intuition, when you're talking to somebody, you can tell, I mean, maybe it's not even intuition, it's just obvious. Mm -hmm. But how do you continue to foster that? Hi, this is Dan Cuneo with the Business Blueprint. Thank you for taking time to listen to this week's podcast. Please join us next week for part two. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this insightful and entertaining, be sure to hit subscribe below and join us on social media to get more insight into what we are going through each and every day.